Governor Minister Rob, Pernell Charles Jr., a rising star in the Jamaica Labour Party administration, yesterday felt the sting of a daring daylight robbery when thieves removed government documents and a wallet and computer bag from his Toyota Prado in Kingston. Charles, who heads the Super Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change, was hit as a cruel moment as he commiserated with relatives grieving the loss of an uncle. The minister's car was parked outside his family nursing home in Rush Lights in St. Andrew at about 9.30 a.m., Charles confirmed. The robbers drove past the car in a Honda stream, apparently to scope out the area and return minutes later to smash a back window of the Prado before escaping with his property. Police who were quickly on the scene collected surveillance tapes from security cameras mounted on homes facing the roadway and were able to see the robbery in motion, a spokesman told the Jamaica Observer. The importance of the government documents and the content of the wallet taken from the vehicle were not immediately ascertained, but Charles said the incident demonstrated the importance of the surveillance camera being mounted all over Jamaica to catch the breakers. We have to take the burden of our police officers by resorting to technology more and more, said the discharge Charles, a former junior minister for national security and current member of parliament for Clarendon Southeastern. Charles, an attorney at law who is qualified to practice law in Jamaica and the United States of America, serve as minister without portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation before his current appointment. He was previously the Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Three men arrested after slapping away a man in Chilani. The police have arrested three men in relation to an incident in Wakefield in Chilani. It's reported that during a dispute earlier today, the men wet up another man. One illegal firearm was reportedly recovered. More details will be provided soon. Man gets slapped with a woman injured in Manchester. A manhunt is on by the Manchester police for the bad boys who wet up a party in the parish on Friday night, leaving one man pronounced and a woman injured. The deceased has been identified as 33 year old Shane McDonald of Bethel Street in Greenville in Manchester. Police reports are that sometime after 9 pm, several persons were at the event in Daviton near Belfield in the parish when bad boys opened fire, eating McDonald and the woman. The bad boy then fled the area. The injured person were taken to hospital where McDonald was pronounced and the woman was admitted for treatment. No motive has yet been established for the incident. Mother cry after the passing of her earlier son. Sophia McKenzie is mourning the loss of her 22-year-old son, Tyson Russian Dunn, who got wet up and later pronounced at the corner of Pink Lane and Beeston Street in Kingston yesterday evening. Pink Lane is situated in the violent Denham Town community, which has been engulfed in gang feud in recent times. While finding it hard to come to terms with the incident, Mackenzie said her usual warning to him is to stay clear of wrongdoing, but obviously he was odious. Him not hear me, man. He was such a nice little boy, and I don't know what changed him, but him just thought for a friend and get caught up, Mackenzie said. He passed away leaving a one-year-old son. The family is taking it hard. It's really hard, bud. No police no come to wait or nothing. Mackenzie said, adding that she will have to stand responsibility for her granddaughter. Investigators theorized that Dunn is linked to the ongoing gang feud in Denham Town, and Mackenzie agrees. Yeah, it's because of it. Mackenzie said she last saw Dunn shortly after 2 p.m. on Sunday. I buy a piece of chicken and chips for him, and him beat and him eat it. Him can sit at the gate for a while. But all when the can 
the ma fire, me still a wash. And when me come out, me hear her say, I am get caught up, she said. Curfew imposed in Nagoyed in Portmore. A curfew has been imposed in section of Nagoyed in Portmore St. Catherine, effective 6 p.m. Monday, July 12, and will remain in effect until 6 p.m. on Wednesday, July 14. The boundaries of the curfew are as follows. Not along dark lane from the intersection with Newland Main Road to the western boundary, imaginary line that runs through West Bank. East along the Newland Main Road from the intersection of Nagoya Drive to the intersection of Dark Lane, land beside Portmore Evangelistic Center. South along Nagoya Drive from the intersection of West Bank to the intersection of Newland Main Road. West along an imaginary line from Dark Lane running through West Banks to Nagoya Drive. During the hours of the curfew, all persons within the boundaries are required to remain within their premises unless authorized in writing by the ground commander. <laughs> yeah man my people, so first thing I have to say is condolence goes out to everybody we report pan, we drop out. Condolence goes out to Fidem family. Zimi and the previous article we mentioned with the youth from Kingston Tyson. Me have to say, me love how our mother and her pretty up things and go on like say, him are the most innocent youth she ever know. She tell on a straight so she know say, him been a fella company, him been involved in a few little things and she said she warned him, but unfortunately, he never took her warning and see there, he dropped out just like that. The man them going to slap him away. So I have to say, no respect to the mother for that. If he can come out and actually say, yeah, our son, the involved in a certain things are our son, fall a friend and get caught up in a certain little things. You see me? Enough mother would have come out and a protest and I say, yo, him son innocent. But we love the facts that the mother yeah, can come out and say she knows say her son no innocent. You see me? Now, speaking about Pernell Charles, where the man them go running pan and rob. Maybe if things like this did have reached them more often, best beliefs that they would have tried. Them best to try and slow down the crime we are going in, in Jamaica. But if things like them and reach them, if things like them and reach them personally, then them not going to really rush to do them things there to try to make Jamaica a better place. Maybe some things have to reach them like we all happen to the, 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 the Yeti president. And if them continue that way, they, trust me, one day you're going to reach this too.